hello welcome to my channel once again once again listen there is this interesting story that i would like to share it is coming from joy news and this story is a lesson to all of us this story is a lesson to everyone if you are watching this listen definitely you need to take some advice or something from this video that i'm about to show you the video is very long so what i'm going to do is i'm going to narrate half of the story to you and play you the continuation of this video for you to understand the whole story this is a story it's about a group of men who came from liberia some time ago about 24 years ago they came from liberia they were going to togo to buy a car they go to ghana and what happened was it was late so they decided that they want to do what sleep in ghana then early in the morning they do what they pick a car and go to togo but instead of them sleeping at a hotel they did not they went to the club rather so when it was getting to let's say four or five in the morning they decided to look for a car and charter the car from ghana to togo because they, they were going to togo to buy cars that's like their business and that's what they've been doing so these people picked the car from ghana and they were going to togo i think when you listen to the narration it was around on the motorway that's when everything started the driver that he picked also picked up additional two people who were ghanaians so the other group that also came from togo they are five and they were also in the car when they were going the other two guys that joined the car who were ghanaians were telling the driver that they should do it here in tree they should do it here because they knew that the, the other five guys coming from liberia they didn't understand the language and it seems all of them two were asleep it was just only one person who was not sleeping and that person heard or saw the action and started shouting and screaming that these guys are armed robbers so immediately because they are more than the number that's the driver and the other two guys because they are five immediately they they got down from the car and just started and started running to a nearby community i think around tulaku thereabouts so that was basically what happened and just people that came from liberia realizing that these guys are truly arm robbers what they did was they said then these people have run away so they are doing what's going to drive the car to a nearby police station like for them to report to the police that hey some arm robbers wanted to rob them and that and they've gotten down they run away that's why they are bringing the car to the police station and immediately they decided to do what to drive the car to the nearby police station that's when they saw military men coming closer to their car and started pulling them from the car and started beating them and all that so even some of them ran away but they got i think two of them and they really beat them up they really really beat them up so they took them to the barracks the the ones that were caught they took them to the barracks and they were waiting to get the other guys but what the other guys also did was they got the opportunity to get to a nearby police station and they lodged a complaint and they got one police officer that took them to the barracks so that they could even get the other brothers that's the guys from liberia but immediately they got there they were arrested immediately they introduced themselves they like they were arrested so i want to continue the story i just want you to watch the video and let's continue the story from here just listen a police officer that saved the vice president of Liberia. At this point, I've asked one of my guys to turn, one of the drivers I was taking, to turn the car around so that we come in town to find a police station. And the neighbors came and met us turning the car around. So it proved that we were on robbing the, right. uh, the Ghanaian men. There was no right. way to say anything. Right. So the fire in the air, bow, bow. And then we all started running. So we ran in the bush. I ran with a friend called Perry. We all went 
to, to some people went alone. So they grabbed one of my guys, his name is Yankee. Right. They beat him and he had cut all on him. He and the Togoli guy were together. They hit the Togoli guy in the mouth and broke two teeth. Wow. From his mouth. So they arrested those two. They didn't arrest some of us. So I slept in a bush around the place. I don't remember very well, but it's on the highway to Togo. Mm. And there were some people praying in the bush. So my friend said, let's reach out to these people. I said, no. It could be the same people pretending to be uh, mm -hmm. Christians and praying. So let's lie down here until tomorrow morning. So we slept. Soon morning by six, we got up and we started walking, asking questions to find a police station. So they directed us to Ashama police station. Ashaman police station. Ashaman police station. Right. So we went there and told the police that, look, we are Liberians. We were traveling and we were armed up last night and we are spleen. So, Addison, I don't know his first name, but I remember Emmanuel the Addison Epoch very Addison. well. Right. So, Addison was the guy in charge of the case. The police guy who was asked to take us to where the thing happened and let's see the site. So, he took us to the gas station. When we went there, they were blood all on the ground because they broke the guard teeth and beat our guys there. So the guys working at the station said last night they arrested some arm robbers here and they took them to the Navy base. The Naval base. The right. Navy base. So he told us, let's go there. When we, when we entered the base, he explained to the people that he has come, he learned that there were some people arrested here and so uh, these are some of the people who were there last night. Oh, they cuffed us. All right. I think I'll let you hold it there yes. and let him uh, continue, Mr. Addison, because you were in the police service at the time. You were the Addison, that, the Addison that he, he's speaking of, right? Exactly so. so. So narrate the story for us from there. What exactly happened yes. once you took them to the naval base? Yes, um, let me start from the time they came to Asama Police Station and lodged a mm. complaint. I was then on duty. I was on duty then. So they referred the case to me as a CID man on duty. So they referred the case to me, and I started. The, I took their statement as usual. Then, I said, "Let's move to the scene." So we went to the scene of crime, and we saw that uh, there's a blood stains around. So we saw, then they followed it. So we went to a nearby police station, Shell police station, just on the way to on the way to um, Titi Brothers. Right. The first police station on your left, mm. on your left. So we went there. And we saw a pool of blood, as he said. So I quickly asked the Navy officer on duty, Baza, what happened? I saw it was, oh, the arrestors are armed robbers, and those attendants also testified. And you have said them to the never base, never base. Okay, so quickly we took taxi and went there. Truly, when we met the officer, they confirmed that yes, they brought them, but they have sent them to um, Fishing Harbor Police Station. Since the case fall within the, 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 I'm, I'm in the police jurisdiction. So we went to Fishing Abo. Immediately that I introduced myself, that these two gentlemen also came to Ashaman and lodged complaint of robbery against the driver and the two occupants. They arrested them. That, oh, well, we are even looking for them. Oh, this arm robbery, oh, yeah. Well, when we went there, one of them in the cells, is it Mr. Far, called. Called him. I said, oh, so you are part of. God. Initially, I didn't want to disclose them. Right. So, Mr. Mustafa called them. I said, oh, so they are all here. Then they arrested all, all of them. So quickly, I have to inform my crime officer, who is now COP uh, from Pong. From Pong. Mm. Then he directed me that I should come to Ashwan Police Station. They informed the regional commander. They said, oh, since the case falls within Ashwan jurisdiction, we should take over the case. So they raised the. The, the suspect to me and his so when you say they released the suspects to you or or now you had five of them five of them and you took them where to the Ashraman police station no, it, but but they were they, somewhere injured so when i, I sent them to Ashraman <coughs> police station for for their health safe i sent them to, uh, I sent them to, to my general hospital they treated them some got a big cut here yeah? and so also lost their teeth so they treated them first aid and i sent them to police station then we started investigation. So, to cut everything short, we invited the bus man, the bus driver. The bus driver. Because right. the bus driver was now a complainant. He went to fishing and brought complaint. Yeah. 
So after the handover of the, the, this, I, I called him and he came. So he took his statements, and you know, there was a lot of uh, co uh, no, the, the, the statement incoherence, was, right? It didn't add up. No, there was a missing link somewhere. So, I thought, so what happened? Did you see this for armed? What happened? And let, let because that was that was another question I was going yes. to ask. Even when they were apprehended, these people were not armed. They were not right? armed. So what happened? So armed robbers without ammunition. So I what mean. happened? So that's another. This case, I have to be very careful and take pains to investigate it. So I told my car was about you don't send Citrep now because the minute there's an armed robbery case, you have to send a Citrep. So hold on. I don't know whether they send it, but I said, this one, there's no need for me to rise and go and mind them. Well, that time, if you get any armed robbery case, you have to go to court, just remind them. Yeah. Sometimes it was a quick process, I mean, very quick you know, process, you know, because of the spate of armed robbery. Yes. Mm. So, yes, so during investigations, then I go to know that these people were innocent. Mm. They were innocent. And that one, the, the thing that really helped them, initially they were feeling right to give me, I asked them a question. You, you are saying you were a businessman. Mm. We are going to buy cars. Mm. Where is the money that you are holding? All right. So, no, we don't have money, no. Uh, Mr. Mazza, this one, if you show me, I won't take it. It will be going to help us to establish the only sense about this case. So later, while he was in sales, I brought him out. He said, go and lead me. So we went to the same place, opposite, got it to Tulaku. They okay. went far. They went far. Went to Tulaku. Then the dug a hole there, buried the huge money, and they put a stick. The one went there For 40, to uh, identify. 40, so, so, so uh, briefly, I'll, I'll come back to you. What, what made you do this? You, you buried the money and put a stick there to help you identify. But what made you do that? So, Was so, it fear? So, so remember, uh, we, we're being Arab, we are afraid, we are in Ghana, and we don't mm. know the way out. Uh, coming from our country, it was war time, mm. seeing somebody with 40,000, you could lose your life. Yeah. And so we didn't want to keep the money on us. So what we did was dug the hole, put the money in there, bury it, and put uh, some something there. But what made you think someone hadn't seen you who would come and it was, it you was know, in dig the night. it up? It was in the night. Nobody oh. could see. This thing is happening by 4, 5 in the morning. So nobody okay. could, could see that. Something. So we're hoping that after all this thing, we'll come back and uh, come to the gas station and find where... We put the money. And then you make your purchase. You go and yeah. purchase your So at first, we're afraid. When he, when he asked us for the money, we said, and one ourselves, you show this guy the money, he will kill us. So it better we don't show the money. Let's just say the money got missing. So they kept asking, oh, we slept in jail for the first day, oh. the second day, the third day. Then I told my friends, look, let's show him the money. If even he take the money, fine, let's be free and go back. Right. Because what shocked me was the jail I was in. Hmm. When I asked some of the guys, uh, excuse me, how long you been here? 15 years, uh, 20 years. What did you do? I robber, I did this. I said, my life is finished. <laughs> you so are here for 10, 15 your years. Life flashed my before life your eyes. is finished. Right. And so at that point, I said, look, because what, what the police, he needed was to be convinced that we're business people. Right. And to be business people, we must have money. Exactly. So I contacted the guy in Togo that we used to buy a car from. He was a customer. I informed him the guy came. And then we went with him and showed him where the money was. And then we took the money out of the ground. When he took the money, he thought it was that original money. So they took it to the bank and they tested it. And it was money. Then I want to believe that he concluded that these guys, because the bus doesn't cost $3,000. Right. So why would somebody traveling, group of people traveling with about $40,000, right. want to unwrap a 2000 or $3,000 old bus? Exactly. And, 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 and that's where I'll, I'll hold you up again. So coming back to you, Mr. Addison, that, was that where you realized that their story held water, that it made more sense than the story of the, the, the bus driver? Yes. Mm. And, and uh, to add to it, uh, I, I, I even asked him to give me if he has a, a card a court card of the dealer in Togo. Right. And surprisingly, he came out with a court card. Okay. So I, 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 I reasoned from the cells and moved to the nearby communication center, then yeah. very difficult to, yeah. yes, yeah. nearby communication center, and we called. I didn't allow him to talk. 
I asked a certain independent person to talk to the man. That he mentioned his name. He said, "You know this guy." So the guy also confirmed. Yes, I said, "So what? then you come to Ghana. This is the situation that the people are in now." And seriously, the man also came, and I took his statements, and I saw that it was collaborative. So at that time, you realized they were not armed robbers. They were in for business. But something else I'd like to find out. What then happened to the bus driver who had come to, you know, spin this yarn, tell the story, and the other two who were actually the armed robbers who had now gone to, you know, yeah. lodge the complaint? When, when I asked this question, the man denied. When I, I was taking his statements as a complainant, the man denied. And I asked him, can you produce the two occupants? So they are... There were mere passengers on board. So immediately the incident happened, they also traveled to Togo. So when are they coming? So yeah, I, I, he doesn't know them then. This is what he said. So it's okay. So we're then not having concrete evidence to stand on it to prosecute the case. Mm -hmm. So I had a conference meeting with my chief inspector, crime, and the district officer, and the crime officer, Mr. Flon Paul. And I narrated everything to them, and it was okay. Then let inform the Ruja commander. So we booked an appointment, and we went to the Ruja commander together with all the parties: the bus driver, the the bus driver, the navy officer who was on duty at that, at that police station was also summoned. He came, and my accused was. My accuser, uh, uh, my, my suspects, the alleged arm robbery suspects, or arm robbers. So, so when we met, initially we, we, the officers met the, the regional commander, then Mr. Mentor, they met him and briefed him. So they took over my, my docket, studied it, and they asked me to excuse them. So they discussed over this issue for a very long time before they said, okay, they was a call the Navy officer. I was there when they called the two first. And the way they interviewed the Navy officer, he was also there when people shouted. No, no, the guy was just running toward that place to take a refuge. But they mistakenly, because the people were shouting, I'm robbers, I'm robbers. So they, and he uh, could also speak English. She is a total. They are one of those people. So that's why the Daring Engine, but he even intervened and they sent him to. So there wasn't any concrete evidence to prove from that man that he was, was he armed? So did uh -huh. you search him? Uh -huh. That's why all this question, the man could not answer. So the in presence of my, 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 my officers, they said, okay, then we stand here. They said, I should bring them. When they came, they interviewed them and also said what he said. And finally, the original commander with her own discretion said, this case, we should discontinue it. Because so the case was discontinued. Yeah, the bus driver. No, they say, well, the bus driver failed to produce. Right. But, but now that it was pointing to the fact that he could actually be the perpetrator, but there was not enough evidence, not, so not, not, it, 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 it had to be left there. Uh, hold, hold for me up. Uh, back to you, Jeremiah. So you were told you, you could go, all five of you. You were told you were free. Yes. You could go. Yes. So when, but, it, when it took... But what happened after that? Because there was something else that happened with Mr. Addison. So, so something he didn't measure, he was taking my statement. The bus driver has a sister. Who was a who was somebody in the Ghana security sector, whether police or at the court? The lady has come to talk to him. We both were in the room, and they were both speaking three. So I didn't understand where they were speaking. But then later he came out. The, the talk got so hard, and he came out in English that he wouldn't do this. And the lady says, "Is this because of the Liberian uh, use other words I don't want to use?" He said, "Because of that, you are my brother. And you are talking to me like this." We meet at the court, and she left in anger. So then I asked, then he said, she has come to talk to me to see how I can help her and make sure you people are guilty. Because our dad, they were talking. To see how he can how help he can her. turn the case against us. Uh -huh. Because the both of them were speaking three, and later their voice went very high, mm. and they came to English. Mm. Then, the, then the lady said, is this because of this Liberian uh, something else? Right. That I, could, I can't say it now. Because of that, you are my brother from Ghana, and you're trying to... to what, what did you think was happening? Because of the money involved? I don't know. Apparently... Mr. Addison, was it, was it, was it, hold for me. Was it because of the money? This person not, was... Not, not, not really. Um, the cheese better as a brother to the driver. 
So, ah. so, so when I was taking this man's statement, she came there. And that time I saw that my man was really weak, but he could, he could not take anything. So I decided to buy him malt and biscuit. I even begged him to, because I, I wanted to be in healthy form before I would take a, his statement. And the one said, ah, why are you pampering them? Yeah, oh, I'm rubbish. Hmm. Madam, I've finished with your brother. Will you please excuse me? I said it in three. Okay, so that was that was her bone, yes. the bone of contention. Yes, the bone of contention. Because she she was related to yes, yes. the bus driver, bus driver, and she felt you were giving them some preferential yes. treatment. Yes. Okay, yes. all right. Yes. So, so you so heard all of that. Us to the police station. We went to the Ghana National Police Station to meet the director of police. Police headquarters. Yeah, police headquarters. No, no, no. Regional police. Regional Command. police headquarters. All right. So when we went there, uh, we were asked to sit on the floor, and we sat down, and they asked uh, the director, the big policeman, asked us. And I explained, and they asked the bus driver, he explained. And the, the police commander said, look, these people are not armed robbers. And he told us, the last thing he said to us was, look, next time you come to Ghana, when it's late, stay off the street, find somewhere to be. Because there's too many armed robbery going on, it's done by people who are coming from nearby countries. Countries I don't want to call now. And so, please be careful next time. We'll provide you security to escort you at the Togo border. And they brought out the money. They gave me the money. Yes, I checked the money. And that's the part that makes me, I'm never forgetting this man. Tell us that part of the story. When I checked the money, they asked me, is your money correct? I said, yes, my money is correct. Mm. They said, thank you. Take your money and you can leave. It was surprising to me. Because Who was telling you this, Mr. Addison? The director of police. Oh, right. The police, the regional right. commander. Right. So take your money and you can leave. We'll give you escort to escort you. So we said thank you. When we got out, we, I called Addison and I checked a thousand dollars and gave it to him to tell him thank you. He said no. So I assumed that the money was small. This guy has helped out and we are free. We have money. He could take all this money. So apparently he's not happy that we are giving a thousand dollars. So I added one more. I said, this is two. He so that was no. two thousand dollars. Two thousand dollars. He said no. And so I finally made it three thousand right. dollars. So I called my friends and said, look, I think the guy wants something better and we should give him something better. So let me, let me make the money three thousand mm. dollars. So we make the money three thousand dollars, brother, and gave it to him. He said, look, my brother, I don't want your money. I didn't help you for money. I got two of my brothers that are also Ghana. It could be them that this thing happening to. Mm. And so I'm not working for pay. You can have your money, thank you. Wow. I've never seen such thing before. Since I left, I remember that name, Addison. And so every time I came to Ghana, mm. because it took me some years to come to Ghana, so one time I went to Ashama police station to look for this Addison. Nobody knows him. Because I only know Addison. I don't know the first name. So every time I see a policeman or I see a group of, uh, security personnel in Ghana, I ask them, do you know one Addison? In fact, in Liberia, Omil, the UN uh, people that came to Liberia for peace, Ghanaians, Nigerians, people from all walks of life, the police and the military observer, they live in my compound. I, they were my tenants, renting from me. So every time I see a, I go to the Ghanaian guard, there was one called Yakubu. He was a policeman. To ask about him. To ask about him. Oh, we don't know that name. Okay, so you watching this. What lesson have you taken from this whole story? The five guys that came from Liberia, that they wanted to go to Togo and buy cars. Now, one of them, back in the year 2000, now one of them is the vice president of Liberia. So if this policeman did not decide that, hey, these people are trying to be fishy here, so he's going to take this, the matter seriously and investigate and free the, the innocent ones, rather. By, by now, this man would have been in jail in Ghana. By now, this man, the vice president, would have been in jail today as we speak. Or perhaps he would have been released or something, but 
that would have damaged his reputation to even becoming a vice president of Liberia. And just look at this man today, sitting with the vice president of Liberia, sitting with the vice president of Liberia. And one thing that I have also seen is that the vice president of Liberia, the man is a very good man. Listen, he's a very, very good man because if it was to be somebody else, by now they have forgotten about the police officer and just be living their lives. But after 24 years, he came back to look for this man. It's so beautiful. Listening to this story is so, so beautiful. So, so beautiful. Listen, let's try and leave a good footprint whilst we are living this life because you don't know what will happen in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching.